Welcome to this week's video. This week's story is about recognizing that most often what we are looking for is right in front of our eyes. If we are willing to open our eyes to see beyond what we perhaps are normally seeing. Uh, I know that's cryptic, but that's kind of just the way my mind works. So as, uh, as the story unfolds, perhaps it will make more sense to you and perhaps not, but only time will tell. It is also a story about how, from my perspective, what I recognize is that when I am seeing something outside of myself, more times than not, it already exists within me. And that is uh, both the light and the dark aspects of humanity and our personalities and uh, aspects of our humanness and beingness. And what I really am kind of focusing on in this video, because it's what presented itself to me at this point in time, is how when we admire uh, someone or something outside of ourselves, what is actually happening is we are seeing ourselves reflected in that person or that thing and when we take the time to do some personal self-reflection and uh, get out of our own way so to speak we can actually come to a place of recognizing that those things exist within us already and it's just a matter of nurturing them it's sometimes it's a matter of having support uh, come from outside sources in order to kind of awaken those aspects of ourselves and uh, it's also yeah it's about being willing to celebrate ourselves just as much as we celebrate other people for the last two years ever since moving into my tiny temple i have been looking for a dresser to fit in this particular spot I tried to convince my mother for a while to pass on one of her dressers that was the perfect size to no avail. I can understand why she didn't want to give it up. It was, It is a really beautiful dresser and uh, has its own spot in her house. I looked on Marketplace, I kept looking in secondhand stores and didn't find anything. I was even looking on the side of the road. Still nothing came up. And then one day, about two months ago, I was in an outbuilding of my father's looking for something completely different I believe something to finish off my shower that I was working on and I happened to come across this dresser that was the perfect size for what I was looking for and for the space I was looking to fill so checked in with him he wasn't planning on using it it was a project he had uh, left left behind a while ago so I got to work re-beautifying it I gave it a nice coat of white paint, I fixed all the drawers that needed um, help, and I added some beautiful little uh, driftwood handles, as it had no handles at all previous. I think the refurbish turned out amazing, it cost me little to nothing, and uh, yeah, I still have a little bit of work to do, I want to add some wallpaper to the drawers and there's a piece of wood that's missing and I need to fix one of the drawer bottoms still that broke during my uh, fixing process. But all in all, this cost me barely anything. Um, it was right in front of me all along and it fits perfectly into my space and has definitely helped me become even more organized in this tiny temple that I call home.
Next on my project list, list is putting up my winter curtains. I really wanted to also do this cheaply. For the last couple years, I have hung my big thick velvet curtains on pieces of driftwood, but it really was not that practical. It was hard to open and close the curtains because the driftwood wasn't very straight and some of the pieces had knots in it. Uh, and so I was looking to do this a different way. I had one leftover wooden broomstick from a different project and uh, was looking for two more. Couldn't find them at the store that I looked at. Mentioned it to a family member. They happened to be able to recover two wooden broom handles that had been thrown away. And uh, they passed those along to me and I was able to use them to get my curtains up again costing me very little and uh, yeah it's great and I also was able to uh, put up another shelf while I was at it while I had to drill out which um, helped me have a place to put some of my books. I also aim to take you on a little bit of a sound healing journey as well as a, a bit of a color therapy session uh, just with some of my activities that involve color and, and sound. I am creating the soundscape for this video using a few different instruments that I have on hand and that I have been of practicing, using, and incorporating into my own healing um, journey. And yeah, I want to share that with those of you who are watching. I want this to be a kind of a full, full spectrum experience that includes um, most of the senses, all the ones that I can incorporate into a video. So definitely will be uh, not including scent as um, as a sense or our sense of smell um, but during the food portion of this video when I get creative in the kitchen perhaps you can use your imagination and and uh, and just tap into what you think uh, <laughs> It smells like as you're you're watching me. I can assure you that my little tiny temple here smelled very good as I was cooking that meal, and uh, it was it was a great pleasure to get to enjoy the fragrant aroma of cooking a healthy, delicious meal for myself. I highly recommend if you are kind of uh, struggling a little bit to maybe get into kitchen kind of stuff and cooking and, and find deeper inspiration for that aspect of your life, I highly recommend choosing to tap more fully into your senses and uh, really go on a bit of a journey with yourself and the food and just make it more of an experience rather than just a task or a chore. That's how I like to approach most of what I do, especially the more, what can be seen as more mundane. With things like washing dishes, um, I really, it's not something that I truly enjoy doing, so I have had to cultivate my own joy and pleasure with, with washing dishes. Um, and I have gotten to a place where I actually don't mind doing it. Uh, later on in this video, I will kind of show you a bit of my process of doing dishes off-grid. It's not really um, that different, but just involves some different preparation, I suppose, uh, with my setup anyhow. And yeah, I have found a way to make doing dishes a sensual experience, and I recommend trying that for yourself if you have a hard time finding the motivation to do your daily chores whatever they might be uh, yeah 
allow yourself to cultivate joy and find pleasure in the simplest and smallest aspects of life. happen to be one of those people who use mason jars or canning jars for pretty much everything. So I do get a lot of satisfaction out of cleaning a batch of jars that are destined for who knows what, but surely some great things await their future. I found this a lot of wooden beads at a thrift store recently for $8. They were all uh, strung already on strings and I decided to separate them into their respective colors. Um, it was a very therapeutic and meditative practice. Uh, one that reminded me of playing with Skittles. I definitely did not eat any of these beads in the process, but uh, yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed just uh, handling all the colors and separating them, and guess where they ended up for storage? You guessed it! <laughs> Some mason jars!
about four years ago, I met a woman named Paloma. And her and I slowly got to know each other through me being a customer at the health food store that she worked at. And we talked more and more, we had some mutual friends, and eventually we decided to hang out and be creative together. And that was the beginning of a very beautiful friendship, a very beloved soul ship, as I would say, um, that has taken us both on extremely creative endeavors. And we have, or I would say that we have really inspired each other to keep on our path of creativity and creative expression and just really embrace what it means to be a unique creatrix. This book that I am unpacking is one of her latest creations. It is an inspiration book for heart expansion, full of her own art and her own written words. Paloma and I were part of the same writing group for a while, and uh, we have, yeah, like I mentioned, we have just shared a lot of creative time together, and I am just absolutely so thrilled to have this book in my hands. It is hot off the press. Um, the more I look through it, the more enthralled I am by it, and the more proud I am of Paloma for following through on this idea of hers and birthing this beautiful creation into the world. If you are interested in a copy of it yourself, it is available through her website, which I will link in the description of this video. With all of the excitement of her book, I almost forgot about this amazing scrunchie that she sent along for me. It's made out of gold fabric that I passed on to her a long time ago. She filled it with crystals and now I am wearing it in my hair and I love it. It jingles and jangles as I cook. It's time for some more kitchen witching, and uh, this time I'm going to be making some maple ginger baked carrots with mushrooms on a bed of rice. I realized that the ingredients that I'm using in this dish are very similar to the ingredients that I used in the last dish that I shared on this channel. And there's two reasons for that. One being it's what I have on hand right now. And the other reason being is that I wanted to show that there can be a lot of diversity using the same products. One of the things that I really try to do is to eat seasonally. And as you can tell, or maybe as you are just learning, these uh, ingredients that I'm working with are definitely what I would consider seasonal ingredients right now. And it's just wonderful to me what can be done with such simple ingredients. So I've got onions, garlic, ginger, carrots, and mushrooms. And I am going to be chopping all of these up, layering them in a baking dish, adding some olive oil, some maple syrup, and a little sprinkle of my fancy fur tip salt. And then I'll be baking it in the oven 
while I cook a small pot of basmati rice.
I couldn't help myself. I had to add some dried dill to this dish as well. So I suppose the only thing that's really that different with me doing my dishes off grid is that I have to heat my water up. I don't actually have running water inside of my tiny temple. So I heat my water up on my wood stove. I just always have a big pot of water warming up there. And then as you can see in the right of the screen, there's a big glass jug that is filled with cold water. And that's what I use for rinsing the dishes. I'm just adjusting the temperature of my wash water with some cold water as sometimes when the water comes off the stove in the pot it is very hot and needs a little bit of cold added to it so that my hands don't burn.